And then I'm gonna kind of hop into supplements and pharma. There's a lot of information out there on both of those, but um, I don't really have that much science and I kind of wanna touch on other parts, but these are both things that um, have uh, different effects that can help you. The first one is big pharma. Like there are some prescriptions that you may get or some other drugs that can help enhance sexual function um, and can uh, enhance like, you know, just the experience. Um, here are some of them listed. Uh, I have a link at the end of the slides that have um, my prep document. And on that, that, you have links for pretty much everything on what it is and how you can get more info on it. Um, and then the next thing is supp supplements. Uh, a lot of people will recommend some supplements for some things. I think that um, if it works for you, then it works. Uh, and then here's some ones, you know, uh, that have been listed before. Uh, this one, Yo Yohimbe, I'm assuming, um, it was the first one to be listed as an aphrodisiac. So that's kind of an interesting fun fact. Uh, and then here are some other ones that are also listed. And um, by the by woman, we mean, oh, shit. Okay, uh, this slide is wrong. I just mean by uh, properties by people who have vaginas, not just women, but I am assuming that they also self-identify as women in the study that this is quoted from. Um, and so moving onwards, uh, the others that I also wanted to bring up are, oh, oh, sorry, things that could be considered either natural uh, aphrodisiacs or just other substances. Uh, for example, chocolate is actually an aphrodisiac, which is very, um, which is something that people may not know as much of. So there is things that like, I know that all of these names are kind of maybe a little bit, um, you haven't heard of them or you don't know where to get them, but there are things that are uh, accessible regularly, such as chocolate or other like aphrodisiac scents and oils. Um, moving on. Uh, yeah, so one of the things that I kind of want for y'all to take some time to do uh, is just this activity where you're thinking about your boundaries. And if you are seriously considering doing substances uh, and, and or having sex, like same time, different time, any of that, uh, just sitting down with yourself and l thinking about like, you know, what are, what are situations, what are things that I like, things that I don't like, things that I'd be open to trying. Um, and then from there, like think about how you react in situations where you really like something or maybe you want to access something but you can't get it or if other people want to interact with you and you don't want to interact like how does that like how do you interact with that those types of situations in your um, regular everyday life uh, because that may translate over into uh, when you're having substances and also in your communication styles for sex. Um, and in summary, um, substances can impact several different parts, uh, including physical, mental, uh, some may be disinhibiting, uh, and some may um, mess with sensations or change how you view boundaries. Um, the next thing is dosage. Uh, anything, you know, everything in moderation, you can always add more, but you can never add less. Uh, so start small and kind of see where you're going and see how it feels and whether you enjoy it. Um, the next thing is individual responses. Um, everybody's bodies are different. And of course, like talk to your doctors if you are on like prescriptions or anything like that, that may impact specific parts uh, of your interactions with these other substances. Um, and then there's always more to learn. Um, there's like, you can see a lot of situations where people will have contradicting stories, but in the end, like it can be, it's your experience and the best thing you can do is try to prepare yourself for a situation in which you don't know what's happening, um, which can be scary at first, but I think something that is an important like lesson just in life. Um, next is resources. I wanna say that, you know, this is a UC Berkeley program. So there's a bunch of UC Berkeley pro, uh, sources. And then these are also external sources, uh, Path to Care and Baywar more uh, talk to people that may have different consent violations that have happened. Um, 
but these are all just fountains of resources about uh, ways that you can talk and interact with uh, people um, and these types of topics. And then these are my sources. Um, I stopped kind of writing them halfway through, uh, so I just recommend checking out this tiny URL that I have right here uh, if you want to know more. Thanks. Uh.